Welcome. In today's session, we will discuss Mother Did Not Put You on the Program, Part 2. You've often heard Mother say that, I will put the fathers on child support. Well, we're going to look at that more closely in this session. And we will rely on the case law called Blessing versus Freestone. Blessing is the cornerstone of the child support process where the Supreme Court decides exactly what uh, happens in the Title IV-D program, where it says it does not constitute a federal right, and that whether or not a particular person, the custodial mother or the child, is a benefit from Title IV-D. Now, this is a follow-on to the first part of the program where mother did not put you on the program, part one. This is where we showed that based on the case law, that if the mothers were on food stamps or any sort of food benefit, that it does not translate that fathers are on the child support system. If you haven't seen that video, watch this video after you've previewed uh, this one here. So in this session, we're going to discuss, in addition to Blessing versus Freestone, another case called Bonita Lero, L-E-R-O, out of New Jersey. And it was argued in 2011. Now, this particular case is a class action suit brought by the mothers. And so we're going to look at that as, that, look at that as well. So here's the premise of the, this video. Can mothers force fathers on child support? I'm going to tell you the answer right now. The answer is no. However, stick around. Please don't leave. Let's take a look closely and see how that translates in these court cases. And we're going to center it around this particular statute, which is 45 CFR 264.30. And again, we'll discuss this further. We have a video called Defending Your Rights. And in this session, it's important that you understand what your rights are. Hello? My name is Chris, and in this session, we're going to show that mothers are not the individuals or persons that put men or fathers on child support. It is the state. So let's look further into this. As always, we have a non-lawyer maxim that here on this channel, what we do is we review case laws, and then we provide you the feedback uh, as to its results. We have a section called Call to Action. That is, we give you tips and strategies and how you can remedy this problem about whether mom actually put fathers on child support. So let's start off with Blessing versus Freestone. As I said, it's the cornerstone of the child support process. And in Blessing, which is 520 USC 329, it was decided in 1997. So here are the key highlights from, from this case. It says, the enforcement scheme that Congress created in the Title IV-D is limited. The Title IV-D con contains no private remedy, whether judicial or administrative. That means the aggrieved person cannot seek redress, that is, a remedy. There is no private action, as well as the mother has no standing in court to sue on behalf of Title IV-D only the state's secretary can bring a suit for specific performance. Next highlight, the way that the Title IV-D is structured for the state is that the secretary is the one that has the oversight of the program. And the only tool available to the secretary is that they could audit for sub sub substantial compliance or they can review the program to see if it's working. And the only tool available to them is, is to cut the federal funding. Here's another thing that was discussed in the case, is that approximately 25% of the eligible children and custodial parents can go without the services that are private, provided by the Title IV-D program before the Secretary of the State can cut off the services to what is called AFDC grants, and that is aid to families with dependent children. So what is this a saying in blessing? Is that the mother does not have a lawsuit in which to force Title IV-D to do anything. It's a responsibility of the state secretary in order to hold or bring in compliance with the Title IV-D program. So now let's look further into blessing versus freestone, where let's look at it from the children's perspective. 
As it says here, so one of the points is Title IV D is in the nature of a contract. Yes, it's a contract. And that is the state promises to provide certain services to private individuals in exchange for which the federal government promises to give the state funds. In contract law, when such arrangements are made, it is A, promises to pay B, in exchange for what B promises to provide services for C. The person who received the benefit of this exchange is called the third-party beneficiary. And under contract law, the third-party beneficiary are generally regarded as strangers to a contract. That is, they cannot sue if they did not repeat, receive the services. So what's happening is, if B broke the promise and not provide service for C, then the only person who can enforce that promise is party A. So let's look at it another way in graphic format. So I have a picture here, right? So the federal government is A, and the states are B, all 50 B. So the government pours billions of dollars into the states for the child support Title IV D services. Here is C. There's a question mark I have here over the pictures. It says, what if C does not receive the services? Well, that's not a concern for the parents or the children. The federal government is the only one that can bring a lawsuit. Because why? The contract is between the federal government and the state. The contract is not between the mothers, the children, or the fathers. So this explains that in Blessing versus Freestone, when it says that as far as they understand, Title IV D has nothing in common with the custodial parent, the mother, the child, or the father, what they're saying is the agreement is only between the federal government and the state under this program. So now let's look at another case law, and this time it's a class action lawsuit. And by the way, it was not successful. And it's Bonita Lero versus New Jersey Department of Services. In other words, the, the Office of Child Support Services. So this mother, along with other mothers, brought a federal lawsuit against the state of New Jersey, saying that they're not complying with the law. And as it says here that they tried to enforce the compliance of the law under what is called a 1983. However, in Blessing versus Freestone, it says in order to seek redress through a 1983, the plaintiff must assert what is called a violation of rights, not merely a violation of federal law. That is, if they don't collect the child support, it may be a violation of federal law, but it's not a violation of the federal rights. So let's look closer at the class action itself. And so here, the plaintiff filed a class action complaint against the Office of Child Support on behalf of all the mothers who have been participants in the child support system program since October 1, 2000, and who did not receive the interest calculation on their child support arrears. So in this case, we're talking about the arrears, the interest on the word, not the underlying order, not the child support just the interest. So the plaintiff, which are the mothers, asserts the defendant violated her rights or their rights under 42 U.S.C. 1983 because it failed to calculate the post-judgment interest charges on outstanding child support arrears as required by federal law. In addition, the plaintiff sought to compel the child support services to calculate the interest on child support arrears and then to refund those money that was not paid out for each year that it doesn't, this does not happen. So let's what they're asking. They're asking that the mothers calculate their own interest, sort of like a check and balance, like an audit of the child support services to determine whether or not those interests were calculated correctly. And if not, they should be allowed to go into court and sue for the balance of those interests. So here's what happened. Nothing. The lawsuit failed. It failed again because there are no 
rights. Mothers have no rights to dictate what happens in a Title IV-D program. So here I have exactly, if mother does not have rights for Title IV-D and the children have no rights on the Title IV-D, then how is it that mothers claim that they take the fathers to court and put them on child support? These two cases point out that is not possible. The program was never structured that way. Well, here's the answer. This section here is from Texas. Uh, it came out of the Texas Family Court cases, and it's section 231.308. And it says here, Public Identification of Obligors. And it reads, The Title IV agency shall develop a program to identify publicly certain child support obligors who are delinquent in their child support payments, and that these are reported to the child support agency. Right? So in other words, they set up a program in which for people to report publicly the child support. Then on the section 231.309, it says reward for the information. It's a title. It says the title for the agency may offer a reward to an individual who provide information to the agency that leads to the collection of child support payments owed by the obligor who are delinquent in those payments. Next section, it says they shall adopt for those which should be rewarded, those people against individuals to be rewarded for providing that information. And by the way, the rewards are paid out of the funds collected. So let's summarize what that means. So since Blessing says it has nothing to do with the mother and the child, and Lero in New Jersey said the same thing, that you can't even collect the interest on delinquent payments. So what is the role that mothers play within Title IV D Title uh, Title IV D program? Well, this statute under Texas says the mother is nothing more than what? An informant. Mother is an informant in all 50 states that mothers do not put men on child support the state did. And what the state has done is reward them for those services. But that goes against all conventional thinking. Everyone says mothers are put on mothers put fathers on child support. That is not true. According to these two case laws, that is not the case. So now that this program is set up, how does the state bring the fathers into the child support program? And here we are at the the statute. It's 45 CFR 264.30, and it says the state agency must refer all appropriate individuals in the family of a child for whom paternity has not been established or for whom the child support order needs to be established. Well, who provided the referral? The mother, the girlfriend. They're the ones providing the referral to the Title IV-D agency, but they don't have any rights to those funds other than a reward. So in essence, this is how that this is the quintessential statute that pretty much tells everyone that child support has nothing to do with the mother and the child. It's just a reward program between the federal government and the state government. So in my opinion, as in part one, we pointed out that a mother and child who's on food stamp, it does not translate that the fathers are on child support. Here in this part two, it's all about the money. And the goal is paternity equals child support. What does that mean? Is that mothers refer the individual, the name, the social security number, to the agency, and then the agency, along with the state, then start the action against fathers. So if you have a court case where mom is there and mom is saying, put him on child support or I want X, it's nothing more than a smokescreen because legally what you're witnessing is not possible and you have to go to judicial court in order to make that possible. So here we are at the call to action phase. So we've now proven that mother did not put fathers on child support. It's not true. The two case laws, Blessing versus Freestone and Lero of New Jersey, 
prove that they have no rights to the program. The states has all the rights. So what do you do in your case? In this call to action, first, you can file a motion to remove mother from the process. She's not involved in it legally. Next, you want to watch out for paternity. Again, as the statute says, 264.30, they're seeking to establish paternity. So you need to avoid the paternity classification, whether it's through the acknowledgement of paternity or the DNA. Next, look out for those copious warrants for genetic testing. Pay attention to those. Make sure you got to challenge those. And next, we call this the fruit of the poison tree. Poison tree, Because the program was set up specifically for the federal government to the state, it is a lie, in ex- a deception, that they involved fathers in this process and let the fathers believe the mothers are behind all of this. Again, a fruit from the poison tree that says if one fruit on that tree is poison, then the entire tree must be chopped down. So here we are at the end, and if you disagree or you agree with anything we've said in this uh, episode, please feel free to email us, as well as we ask that you like or subscribe to our channel, and also please hit the notification bell. In addition, we ask for a small donation just to keep up with our research and we bring you this information. Here in this episode, we show you that legally, Mother has no rights to the program, never had and never will. And our videos are free, so we ask for a $25 gift uh, to help with our process. So here we are at the end, and please select one of the videos here, including Mother Did Not Put Us on Child Support Part 1. Thank you. Have a good day.